Hello everyone and welcome back to Fableheim and the warrior and the fairy without equal. We resume where we left things off last time by capturing the fishing port of Zeher and we're going to demolish all this. Well, convert this, demolish that, because that's some bandit crap that we don't want. But before we really get into it, I have a lot to talk about today. Before we get into it, I would like to address the elephant in the room. The elephant in the world, as it were. Right now, the world as a whole is facing quite the challenge. And all I really want to say about it is that I hope everyone is staying safe, doing as well as possible. Make sure you continue to protect yourself and your beloveds. I am immunocompromised myself, so I quite understand the struggle of social distancing and washing your hands, <laughs> making sure that you stay safe during these flu-type events, even though this is far worse than a flu. And I just want everyone to know that all human beings and all immunocompromised individuals especially, you have my support. Even though that may not mean much, you do have it. And you may have noticed a few, like a dump of Lubu videos. We They launched pretty fast back to back to back. And that's because my state is now in shelter. What's it called? Shelter in place, which is kind of like an unenforceable quarantine. So I figured, you know what, the rest of the world, a good portion of the world is in a similar situation. If I can entertain or help with escapism for even one person, then I'll be happy. I will consider my job checkmark done. But enough of the real world stuff, because we are here today to become king and kick off the era of the Three Kingdoms. So before we get into the rest of it, I was asked to show the family tree. Here it is. Big Daddy Dong, our adoptive father who we slew, and then Liu Bu. We divorced Lady Yan, who was Liu Bu's historical wife, and married our fictional and beloved fairy, Dear Chen. Liu Ji is our eldest daughter from Lady Yan, and Liu Yongzhen is our child with Dear Chen, another strategist. Oh, quaint. But that family will be expanding because I received a 300 IQ tip, which was last time I mentioned Ma Tong's son, Ma Chao, was kind of like the second coming of Lu Bu, a powerful warrior in his own right. And because our daughter has come of age, we can use her to receive Ma Chao. Now, Ma Chao is quite dissatisfied with his family, but uh, that works in our favor, I suppose. And he gets along with our daughter, which is great. It's always lovely when a when an arranged marriage gets produces love of sorts, I suppose. Also, last time, I'm not quite sure why I thought that whenever I added the coercion, it ended the diplomatic discussion. It most certainly does not. The only time that happens is whenever it's never, I suppose, it can end it. But as you can see, I can manipulate the details of this marriage. 69? Oh, that would have been perfect. I can manipulate the details of this, even though the the coercion is in, so... I'm not sure why I thought that. Don't know. But Ma Chao is ours. Thank you for the tip. It was genius. But now that Ma Chao is here, we have a few things to rearrange in our court. Dao Chan is currently our heir. But she only provides 12 satisfaction. And that is a lot of satisfaction. But it's not really good. Whereas Ma Chao, our new heir, the second coming of Lu Bu, actually probably the only person truly worthy of being Lu Bu's successor, provides plus one available armies, minus 25% redeployment cost, two satisfaction, minus 10% upkeep for Qiang units, plus 15% armor for all shock cav, and plus 15% melee damage for all shock cav, my favorite type of cavalry. Cavalry, the only type in my eyes. So he is a most wonderful faction heir for the vanguard Lu Bu, the most aggressive of individuals. But of course, disinheriting someone makes them incredibly upset. So we are going to remove Zhu Chu from Office of Grand Tutor because, let's be honest, he's not a great Grand Tutor. Place Diao Chan there. She is a much better Grand Tutor. She will be teaching her legacy. I'm sure she'll love that. But now we have a problem or two with individuals. Namely, Lady Yan. I guess Zuchu's a little upset as well. But for Lady Yan, 
we are she's going to be quite mad, so we're going to have to give her a big promotion, such as general in chief or something else that provides. Do we want her to be a commander? Sure. We'll give her general commander. That gives 40 satisfaction because she's going to need it. Zuchu also disappointed with life. He can have a fish. You probably also should give him a, a promotion such as he doesn't need a big one. He can be patrol commander. Sure. There you go. Congratulations. Something else I'd like to finally change. I should point this out first, though. I mentioned during the guide that because Lobo is rank 9, he's, he can only level once to rank 10, which will bring him one talent short of the Dragon's Gaze. And I mentioned you couldn't get it, and that was disappointing. But I was informed that upon reaching rank 10, Lobo gains two points, which allow him to get Reach, and then the Dragon's Gaze. Excellent. A, not a point wasted. With Shen Gong, however... We are going to be recalling him in a moment. We are going to call back Diao Chen, who is providing 10 satisfaction, which is why I perhaps overcompensated for her loss as faction heir with these titles. And she'll be joining her beloved Lu Bu what on the front lines wish, next turn. So we can go ahead and recall Shen Gong to get just a slight boost to our income briefly. A brief boost, as it were. Let's upgrade some of this stuff. The Jade Mine... This. Is this our capital? Hmm. That might not be good. We might be needing to switch it to Ying Chuan, because Ying Chuan is well defended. Look at that. This retinue is incomplete still, but. I'm just trying to think ahead because, for complete transparency's sake, I have attempted to record this a few times. And the reason it didn't go well. Is everything you need to do this turn? I think so. Ah, we can invoke council. I knew there was something else. Government support, alliance, meh, don't be at war with Yang Fang, rip, land, and settlements. Fortune alliance with Lang Zhu, send Diao Chan any assignment. Well, a few of those aren't being completed, but that's okay. The next turn, our mercenary contract will be complete. It'll actually go down to zero, and then the turn after that, it will complete. I'm not cooperating with you, Liu Bei. Liu Bao. But uh, the reason that I've had to try, I've tried to record this a few times is because I noticed something. And that was in the first three Lubu videos, because I kind of recorded them all on the same night, there was brief stuttering. And what was happening was that I was dropping frames. And I believe according to the logs, I dropped like 13% of the total frames. And uh, it started bugging me really bad. And it only happened in Total War because Total War is a bit more demanding than such a game such as Mistover or Erratus Lord of the Dead. So, I did a few things to try and rectify that. I played with OBS settings for like 10 hours total. I actually have a Kong Rong campaign right now because I was using it to test it out. I had to record for like five minutes to get enough data to see if what I was doing was fixing it. And then I would stop and change one thing and do it again. You don't want to change multiple things when you're trying to fix something. You want to change just one thing and make sure you're getting it right. I don't have any coercion at the moment. I could exactly coerce. Is that worth? Do you have enough money for me to like... Ooh. You know what? We're going to do it. We need some money. And quickly. Are there ancillaries? We do have ancillaries. Hello. I don't want that spear, really. Here's a fish. Here's a water clock. Kong Rong wanted that, but... Eh. Coerce. We're getting there. Is this worth it, though? How much can you give me right meow? I'm still not sure how the best way to approach this is, but I think if you, you want to try and keep these two numbers together, I think that's the way that you get the most out of this type of agreements. Maybe. That might not be true. I don't know. It is a theory of mine. Can we do 686? Six, Whoops. Six? Maybe we can get more of this immediately. Per turn starts costing a lot. 620 per turn. Let's go. 
Papa. So anyway, I spent many, many hours trying to fix it. And what ended up happening was Total War was way too demanding on my GPU. So my GPU, which I was using to record, my graphics card, that is, I, uh, it was reaching capacity and then some. So I lowered the graphics in Total War instead of running on Ultra, running on High. And for as far as recording is concerned, I can't do that yet. Ask me in like 10 turns. For the recording, we are recording at 30 FPS instead of 60. Hopefully when you're just watching the video, it's not that noticeable. And uh, that's the main difference. I also changed the color a little bit. I increased it from partial to full. So you should be saying the entire color spectrum. And to try to help that, I also increased the contrast and something else very, very briefly. Contrast and saturation, that one. Like very, very tiny, like plus 0.1 or something. A faction regency. Another faction. Oh, she's dead. A noble birth. Liu Chijin. Beautiful. Trouble brewing. A rivalry. It can be healthy as a platform for two warriors to better themselves. If it is allowed to sour into bitterness and resentment, then issues will arise. Two of your officers are becoming heated with one another, and it is affecting their performance. Perhaps you should investigate. Rot row. Our oldest, staunchest allies are bickering. I don't know if I like that, boys. Victory was never in doubt. This belongs to us now. And uh, I was toying with the thought here, and that was to s sell this, basically. Sell Zeher, the entire commandery, to Matung. For reasons that will become obvious very soon. <laughs> How soon, exactly? 17 soon. That soon. I do want to keep Hadong, however. We're also going to find ourselves in an incredibly precarious situation soon. But not yet. Okay. We need more money. Mo money. I don't think I have... I don't have the coercion available, though. Hmm. Oh, we can get a lot out of Kong Rung, though. All right. Keep an eye on it. And I'm still debating... I should probably mention all of the... Oh, that's tempting. All of the changes before I move on from the subject, because I'm going to forget. Uh, so hopefully it looks better. You can let me know. The stuttering, according to my tests, has stopped. I've also lowered the, or increased the bitrate. It was 5k, which is kind of low. And I increased it to 15k because when I was streaming earlier, it was kind of using 12 to 15k. So I figured that was a good place to fix. Some people on the internet works like recommending because you're locally recording, it doesn't matter. Wow, you want to sign peace. Interesting. It doesn't matter how high your bitrate is. And they're recommending like, like the lowest recommendation was 40k. And I tried that. And it looked good, but the file size was absolutely monstrous. So, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I brought it down to 15k, and hopefully that is sufficient. I also, because of my new keyboard, I could sometimes hear it clicking through the, when I was watching the video. It's supposed to be quiet and tactile. I don't know how factual that is. I guess we just move on. We need more momentum. We also need to spawn a second army, but we're a little broke at the moment. I could probably fix that, though. Ruh -ruh. Against Liu Biao. I could take that. We'll see. We'll see. We're about to be at war with a lot of people, so I don't want to do anything overly crazy. Overly ambitious at the moment. Of course, they're going for this one town. Why wouldn't they? I neglected to build, like, anything there. A tongue sign peace with Liu Zhong. War. Blah. Fraternal instinct. With Ma Chao. No one really interesting, and even though we are going to want to recruit lots and lots of people. Because something that's about to happen. It might even happen here. Victory opens many doors. It does. Many, many doors. Give me money. Do I want this? Yeah. Duty beckons. 
Another knot to my bow. Can we? Oh, this has no garrison. So no, we can't defend that. Follow the heart. This isn't an ideal way to be doing this, but we have no choice if we want to defend it. We could begin on spawning another army. I think we're going to be raising taxes here. My momentum is still really low. Just crank it all the way up. It does disturb our public order quite a bit, but we can probably take it for a few turns. For a few turns, no big deal. I'm trying to think what else I did with the settings. I think that was really it. Income from all sources sounds good to me. Actually, I think I wrote them. I really wrote them all down. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, that was it. Oh, and the key frame interval. This was actually funny. Who are you? I can't see them. Sorry, you and Xiao. There's a thing called key frame interval. And basically what it is, is whenever you're watching something, the... How do I just explain this exactly? There will be times when it will send the entire frame or just a partial frame. And the key frame interval is how frequently it does this. And zero, you would think, means it's always doing this, which would be more demanding on your computer. But that's not true. Zero is the default brother in arms between the Achan and Libu. That's hilarious. Uh, the zero makes it automatic, is what it means, which averages out to about 8.5 seconds every time it will send the full frame. And hello, zeal. Look, our second zeal. Beautiful. Resume standard start. So uh, the recommended is two, so every two seconds it sends the full frame to keep the picture looking smooth. So I changed that. Hopefully all of this together makes the quality better, because that is always my goal for better, ugh, better quality at all times. You know what? I'm still debating on selling these. Let's not upgrade it yet. And now we're going to go over here. My goal, I still can't decide on the strategy here. Because I think I mentioned this, but for full transparency, yeah, that's how I got into the tangent. I have tried to record this. And in my efforts to stop the frame dropping, which I think I've been successful in, I saw what happens. And things are about to get really messy. But I think our best bet is to try and maintain peace with Matang so that we can just ignore this entire front and then swoop across through here and then prepare a defense in our home territory. The other approach we could take is we could abandon our home territory here in the Central Plains and just commit to all of this and then steadily like expand from here because this will give us a safe corner to hide in. And we'd be able to fight Matang and Han Sui for our greatest warriors. I kind of want to kill the bandits though, right? What are these? I do want to kill these guys as well. Increased post-battle loot and poisoned blade. Wow. Enables guerrilla deployment if we get all of them. Although Yanbaihu is really far away. Yeah. No reward. Feels bad. Oh yeah, speaking of spies, how's this going? Are we trading with Zhang Yang? I don't actually remember. No, it's Kong Rong is. You can also extract spies now. I also didn't mention that if you go into battle with turns to recommend the spies retinue over to you, forcing any other generals to be recalled and granting you a new active army in the field. I don't think he has an army in the field. Huh. I don't really want to do any of this. I don't know. There's another turncoat in his army. It's funny. But if an, a general that is your spy is leading an army and engages with you, you can turn that general against the army they're leading. It's so cool. I still haven't seen it, but it's awesome. Against Sun Sa. No. 
War will be breaking out in the central plane soon, TM. So, uh, we're gonna have to decide really quickly if we're gonna want to hunker down or if we're gonna want to abandon. Both are valid strategies that we can I can see working. Oh, we're at war, Zhang Yang. When did this happen? I don't think I can win this because of these heroes or generals. Hmm. Maybe I do want to enact that spy stuff. Yanbai, who has been destroyed. Oh no. The Alliance of Sensa declare war on Sensa. The Alliance of Liu Bang, excuse me, declare war on Sensa. Poor guy. Sai Zhong. Poor man. We are car reckless. Cautious. Machao's already really happy. He's in the ruling family and he's the faction heir. So we're going to go with Shen Gong here. You realize it is better to look before you leap. Dao Chan answered that question, not Lu Bu. So we are probably going to want... We're going to be force marching here. We are probably going to want to think about spawning that other army. I know how to get over here quickest. Maybe the water? We probably want to spawn an army, even though these two are untakeable. He's just going to have to go to Luoyang. And he probably will. Who would we spawn? Shen Gong. I want Ma Chao. Look how expensive Ma Chao is. Well, let's spawn Shen Gong. There is cunning in court. Let's get this it's army started, shall we? This party started. We are still really low on coercion, so I don't think we can really... do much here. We do have a trade agreement. I think it was cancelled with uh, what's-his-face. Do you have anyone interesting? No. Who are you at war with? The Han and Yuan Shao. We could try and vassalize them, but I don't think that's a good idea. Yuan Shao presently is one of our piggy banks. So... The good, the idea of going after Matang would be that we could build the Silk Road and try and get a stable form of currency. Wow, it's exactly 129. That's weird. Uh, build the Silk Road, try and get a f really stable form of income, but um, I don't know. I feel like we want to defend our home territory. That seems like a good idea to me. Maybe it's not, though. Maybe it's not the right call. I don't know who Liu Yao is, Yuan Shu. And don't forget, Lian Shu is still technically Emperor of the Zhong Dynasty. I use air quotes for Emperor. Emperor in air quotes. Going after... Eh, destroy the sapping, why not? Going after this territory can also secure us a corner in the world, but it's... It's not really money, it's food. Which, I mean, isn't the worst thing in the world. I dare you to take this city so that I can just beat you down. Be Chung Yu, meh. Serve peace. I think we spawn in Zhu Chu here. We probably want to save Ma Chao for last. Resist corruption and endure hard Let's bring out the, uh... Hmm. We'll hold with that, I suppose. I suppose. He has a fish. What do you do for commanded stuff again? Commanded army. Range firing rate. No. Probably give leadership to Machao. These have been very boring turns. Yeah, sure. I'm at, I'm at war with him anyway. Might as well accept a contract. Well, that means our second army is going to need to be up and running very soon. This is a valiant defeat. Okay. 
I could have fought that and tried to win it, but I'm just going to accept it. <laughs> and uh, take it. I dared him and he took the dare. Okay. Good for him. Nobody. Gaoshun is now far. Obey instinct. And we are about to have a rebellion here. Lay them low to battle. This is a Pyrrhic victory. This will fare me well. I can't believe that. Look at all the money we got. This shows the time the of the Han is ended. The will of heaven is shifting. The Celestial Empire rests on the tip of a sword. The Emperor's old champions now stoke their own Imperial ambitions. The old ways scatter like leaves before the coming storm. Their time is over. Change is carried on the wind. Dun dun dun! We are now king. Well, we're now emperor. We have declared ourselves emperor and our challengers for the throne. None other than Ma Tung and Xi Zhe. The Three Kingdom period has begun and Xi Zhe has taken control of the puppet emperor. Which is bizarre because we're the emperors, not the puppet. But uh, we have the kingdom of Yin and our incredibly exposed capital. The kingdom of Liang over here, hiding in the corner. Which is kind of where I want to be, honestly. And the kingdom of Jiu hiding in the other corner. Could it be farther away from me? Not really. I don't think so. So, that brings a great question. What priority do we want? Do we want to befriend the kingdom of Liang? Because we probably could. Give him the Zheher province, which isn't doing much for us. Also need to reduce taxes, but... There we go. Lubu is composed. That's funny. No, he's not. He's not composed. And, look at this adorable thing. Look at that beloved little, oh, you don't see it here. But this little dragon, that's awesome. I love that tiny detail. And it's so bizarre to see it on someone that is deployed. Top of that. But, behold the Imperial Court. Lovely place, isn't it? Now, we can begin giving people a bunch of things. Lady Yan can be Minister of Ceremonies. Sure, why not? All of these don't matter. It doesn't matter who's here. They just do stuff. So Zhu Xu can be coachman. Apparently he can't be this, though. And Zhu Niu, for some reason, got kicked out of administrator. He did last time as well. I have no idea why. Not a clue. But we need way more people to fill up this court. People that we don't have. I don't want Dao Chun to be Grand Tutor because her thing sucks. But she's going to be. And I also discovered through science that this... Faction-wide effect that says is only Prime Minister, Heir, or Faction Leader is also Grand Tutor. Ooh, she has precision now. Almost Night Battles. Although I think, yeah, for now, Zheng Liao has the Night Battles covered. So I'm not that concerned. Why did you destroy so much of my stuff, bro? I don't know. So now that we're Emperor, the reason I wanted to wait on this retinue is because now that we're emperor, we have access to the protectors of heaven and the defenders of earth. Protectors of heaven are absolutely amazing halberd infantry that uh, are incredibly expensive, but can basically win you the game. The problem now is that we are a little broke. We do have a lot of power, though. By power, of course, I mean... Um, Coercion. Meh. So, we have a lot of decisions to make. That's a lot. Minus 229. I, uh... I don't know if we're going to be vassalizing anyone. But I do know that we're going to be taking money from Kong Rong because he's rich. Boom. How much are we taking? However much I can get. Which does not appear to be much. I'm not offering any food. We do have some ancillaries that we can get rid of, such as this glaive. This piece of armor. That fish, if we want to throw it in. Which we're going to have to. 
Ooh, that's worth 21, and I can't change this. I don't know why. I also didn't check to see how much it was actually worth. We're gonna need some money now. It's only like 500, I think. Wow, he has 12 grand. Oops. It's only like 500 or 400 that uh, is enough to offset us. I think we want more now. Hmm. Can we get 35? I meant to mention this earlier. I didn't. <laughs> that happens frequently. But uh, the one thing I can promise you is that every day there will be at least one video. If I have extra videos, they'll be uploaded. A frustrating matter that we must concede. Yep. So if you are, if you do enjoy this playthrough, make sure you stick around. How much money do you have? You also have a lot of money. Nice. But I will be recording them kind of like in bulk so that I can do that massive barrage of... I kind of want Miju. So that I can do that massive barrage of, you know, content. That's actually a really good deal for me. Miju was one of the strategists that worked with Tao Qian, one of the more reliable of Tao Qian's advisors. Actually, probably the only reliable of his advisors. So uh, if we can get that in our hands, that's also great. He can slip right into our court, have a grand old time, and Lady Yan might be a little less lonely after we divorced her. Um, I have 60. Five, six to five. This makes Liu Bei and Kong Rong happier, but upsets Zhang Jiang, who are at war with anyway, and Sun Tsa. But because these will be like mass, I almost said mass produced, but mass recorded, I'm afraid I won't be able to enact your suggestions quickly. But please do keep them coming. I love hearing from you, and I love all the brilliant moves that I may or may not have considered. Probably not, honestly. So we're going to bring Diao Chun down to Minister of the Imperial Clan. What is Miju here? Miju is an even worse. Okay. Diao Chen, come back. I can't do that this turn. So he's going to be an administrator. All sources, commerce, silk, and spice. We don't have a whole lot of spice right now. But I think Jun Yu is coming here. Yep, he's going to be in Xiang'an. And we want Ho Sheng, who's doing something at the moment, to be in... Peasantry. Shun? Or Ying Chun? It's going to be Ying Chuan once we get this farmland back. So we need you back. I think Miju is going to be an administrator, but where is he going to be an administrator? What did you do again? Income from all sources, commerce, silk, and spies. We don't really do that. What about Hadong? A dong will probably be a good industry. Okay, Miju is not going to be an administrator yet. But we can put him in one of these positions that do something helpful. Our punishment for garrison. Reduce corruption. That's probably going to be it. Okay, go here for a little bit. And then Diyashan will go back to Grand Tutor next turn. Actually, I didn't even see what this was doing. Available assignments. Okay, that's fine. Jin Yu is going back to administrative slot. We are low on food. We're low on a lot of things, but we have assignments to provide. Fortunately, Ying Chuan losing that farmland really hurt us. We're just going to believe that we get it back. Also, Zhu Chu would have been a great thing to have here. But uh, no can do. We're going to put public order here because it's kind of crumbling away. I can't do any of this yet. Commerce. Luo Yang, actually. Oh, yeah. 
Kann hier. Who's this? Income from all sources. Maybe I want to make him the administrator of this place. So what did he do? Income? I've moved my court around so much. Like a lot. <laughs> maybe we remove this. And then maybe he comes here. Yes. Have a title. You know, this title is probably actually really what's hurting me. Have a fish. Fish will help, right? So we want him here. Which means this guy, who I don't know what he's doing. Ho Chung. Comes out. I've really messed up these later turns. Feels bad. Are you at zero? Is that what that is? Sure is. I can inspire a loyalty, but it's the only one I can do. Okay. Everyone remain calm. Next turn, big turn. The biggest turn of them all. Is that Liu Bei? It is. Liu Bei is descending upon Zheng Yang, I think. Or Zheng Jiang. Uh, Liu Bei wants a non-aggression pack, but he wants me to pay for it. Hmm. Hmm. Don't know about that one. Okay. We're going to recover. Everyone, deep breath. <sighs> Recovery is here. Here we go. 400 IQ move. Well, 400 IQ play, I hope. You can have this, because you're going here into Chang'an. Please and thank you. Increased food, re construction cost reduction, income from all sources, income from commerce and income from industry. The Jade Mine is both industry and commerce. In Luoyang, we have Mi Zhu, who increases source income from all sources and income from commerce, which Luoyang primarily is. And then in Yingchuan, we have Ho Cheng, who is income from all sources and income from peasantry. Shun right now is making more, but Yingchuan will be soon. Look at that. Recover back to the court. Dao Chun is returning to Grand Tutor to provide that satisfaction. Because no one else can do it. Showing you ruthless pragmatist. I like the sound of that from Zhu Gong. He is cruel, arrogant, resourceful. An interesting trait. Filial and pious, pious, but he's careless, competitive, kind-hearted. We do want some more people here. I've been told that my theory of this little spy thing. This little eye, meaning they're willing to spy for you, is a sign that they are indeed not spies. I do want to recruit some of these people, but I also... We'll get Sai Zhong. Because I feel like I recognize that name. Because he can probably, yep, do food. Increase food production, please. Oh, we can also do reward the filial and pious. Nice. Let's do that. And put him... Was it here? Yeah, let's reduce corruption. Putting the brand new guy in charge of finances is probably not a good idea, just for the record. But uh, we're here. Sao Xing can go here. Boom, boom, boom. And our army can begin to complete itself with Ma Chao. And we're going to have to be incredibly aggressive passion. We have the heirloom spear. The Lord of Fire. Isn't this armor? Yeah, can't do that. The cleaver of mountains. We want that. Uh, yes. It is less instinct, which is less damage, but it's still good. Still bueno. And this is gonna go to, uh... What's Dao Qian have? My beloved fairy... Aha, you can have this. And we have no weapon for her. Unfortunate. But tis what it is. On the talk of research, we were running down this for money. 
because money is good. We could probably get more public order. Don't really need food. I also, <laughs> this is really late saying this, but I did increase the volume of the game because it was kind of quiet compared to me. Hopefully that's nice, noticeable. We're also going to be ending very soon because I don't want this to run on too long. Probably want to get this for reduced corruption because we are Lubu. And we do have a rule most chaotic. Our corruption's already beginning to stack up. We probably want to upgrade this city. That seems like a good idea. And I do want to upgrade this army, but money. We want to take one turn to replenish, muster, and then you'll move out. And Lubu is recovering here. We'll be crossing into this area. And we'll take either the Toolmaker if we need money, or the Farmland if we need food. The w we're at war with Gung Sun Zen. Uh, nope. This guy's about to die, so he wants peace. No peace. There can be no peace. Actually, before we do quit, though, I want to take a look at how much it is to get Ma Tong to abdicate. That is, of course, his him forfeiting his claim to the Celestial Throne. This power will and ideally, we want Shi Jie to do it, so I don't have to go across the entire freaking world. But an empire has been formed. Oh no, Jia Ho Chi. Can I reach this? Bah, can't. Barely. One hundred percent chance to ambush here. Oh, I don't think it matters though. We are in need of more money, but the army's here. So we're going to take that opportunity to try and crush that army next time. For now, we continue to spend our money as efficiently as possible. Reserve action. And our faction, our, our faction heir, that is it. We'll take the charge here, I believe. Yep, you're it. Congratulations. Ma Chao takes to the field and shall go claim. Reclaim Ying Chuan, the farmland. Let fury explode and and uh, we will take our faction air to defend our home territory. My, I think what we're committing to, I think what we're leaning into really heavily here, is just seizing all of this. Let the kingdoms do as they... Is this Jiaju? Wow. Uh, we're going to let the kingdoms do what they want over here. Let them fight. I don't care. We're going to lean into this. And then we'll decide if we want to befriend Ma Tong or if we want to just come over here, take everything, and then march down. I think that's the plan. And I hope that you stick around for it. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed that you're for the continuation of our series, The Warrior and the Fairy. Without equal. Soon to be Emperor and Empress.